Well, you have to excuse me, I'm slightly out of breath here. I'm in beautiful Scarbados, aka Scarborough. And uh, I was actually going to say, you know, as a joke, but the sun's come out now, it's raining a minute ago. But it is a, it's a fantastic spot actually for a graveyard. It's next to the, the castle. I've just come up there, that's why I'm breathless from the sea, seafront. And we've got to the quite spectacular church. And the castle's over there, look. So, looks really good. Let's go find it. I've, I have a rough idea where it is. I've not been there yet, but it's not far. Off we jolly well go. Look, I've even got the legs out. It's that warm. I'm getting sunburn on my head. I'll be okay, my hair protects me. <laughs> you have to laugh or else you cry, don't you? Okay, can't my breath after coming up that hill. Let's get on with the bio bit. The bit I usually like, actually, I like to know about them. Um, Anne Bronte was born on, uh, she was born on the 1820 on the 17th of January. I knew I could remember. Uh, she died on the 28th of May, 1849. She was an English novelist and poet, and she was a member of the Bronte literary family. Anne Bronte was the daughter of Marie and Patrick Bronwell. Uh, they were a poor Irish clergyman family, and uh, they lived, of course, in the parish of Haworth, which I know very well, I'm very close to that. She attended the local schools there in Murfield and in 1846 she published her first book of poems with her sisters and later she penned two novels under the name Acton Bell which was their pseudonym. The first novel was called Agnes Grey and was published in 1847 and her second novel was The Tenant of Wildfell Hall that was published in 1848. The Tenet of Wildfell Hall is thought to be the first feminist novel, basically. You've got to have a look at the view, it's great. Swing this round, look, look at the view. Isn't that a superb view there? Got the church here, look, the birds tweeting. Gorgeous sky. Sun's coming through. Scarborough Castle in the distance, look. And that, I presume it must have been, was that part of the castle? It looks like it could have been, doesn't it? I don't know. Somebody's renovating the property there. It's got a nice view through the trees. Yeah. And that, of course, I can just see it now. That's the, that's the lighthouse on the pier at the front. Just got to go down and have a look at that view. It's, it's really, it's great, isn't it? <clears throat> Have you noticed that people, there's certain properties you just could live in. That one in front there, look at a fantastic view of Scarborough Bay. There we go. Hang on, I'll try and get the camera up high. I'm going to go down there in a minute anyway. It's, couldn't be better, could it really? Okay, well... I think we're close. I know it's in the graveyard next door, so I'm going to shoot round there now and have a look. We'll catch up. In 1846, she published her first book of poems along with her sisters. They were under the pseudonym Acton Bell because men, you know, had power then and women didn't. And she penned her first novel, which was called Agnes Grey, um, in 1847. Same year, I think, as Wuthering Nights, but I could be wrong. Her second novel was called The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Um, that was published in 1848. <clears throat> it's thought to be one of the fir first feminist novels, that, actually. Anne died at poor old Anna, only 29 years old. She had pulmonary tuberculosis. After her death, her sister, Charlotte, edited um, Agnes Grey, and she prevented the republication of it, and that's probably why she's not as famous as the other two sisters. Nevertheless, it's still thought to be a classic of English literature, so don't take it away from her. Okay, let's wander on and find the actual grave now. I'm going to spin this so you can see the path. There we go, we're on our way. It's got to be one of the nicest uh, graveyards, easily. 
I mean, it's got everything. You've got the sea view, the castle, the ruins. Fantastic church. Just want to know what those are. Um, it's in this next next door graveyard. I've not been yet. I'm not cheating, but I know it's there because I've read the description. So, if you do want to come, just head towards the castle, and you're there. Couldn't be easier, really. Look at that. Somebody's left a lager there. What a shame. Oh, nice. Huh, quite a climb up that hill, though. That's all I've got to say. Okay. In we go. You can't believe that. I've, I've only just got here, and it's now opened the heavens up. It's chucking it down. I'm going to have to get under this tree. I'm, the, I'm in the grave. It's just through that entrance, so we'll go back in a minute. I've got the protection of my good old friend, the big tree here. I love the rain. I love it. I love it when it rains when I'm in my motor home because it, it bounces on the roof. This big, big boy here is saving me. You won't be able to see it, but yeah, I know that it's part of the castle. It has to be, obviously. Common sense tells you that. Good job I've got this tree. It is absolutely bouncing down. Seems a slight shame in a way that Anne's here. She's not an hour for the rest of the family. But never mind. I remember in um, about 25 years ago, they originally lived in Thornton Village, which is fairly near to Haworth, but everybody associates them with Haworth. But you know, Thornton's a lovely little village, and uh, the actual property was up for sale. And I thought, I couldn't afford it, but I thought, I'd go along, you know, it'd be fantastic to own the house where the Brontes were, were born in. Um, and it was the worst storm for, for ages that night, and I didn't go to the auction, it sold, and now it's part of sort of the exhibition of um, the Brontes. I mean, most people do, do go to Aworth because that's where they lived most of their life, but they were actually born in Thornton. So I think it might just be, might just be stopping. Yeah, I think it is. I can stand a bit of rain. So here we go. Yeah, it's just dotting now. Okay. It's here. Oh, slightly damp, but never mind. Yeah, that must be the original stone there. Look. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, you've got you've got the original stone there, which is unfortunately weathering away. You can see it, but very nice. And they've replaced it with this one. Look. The original headstone reads, Here lies the remains of Anne Bronte, daughter of the Reverend P. Bronte, Patrick. Incumbent of Haworth, Yorkshire, she died aged 28, May the 28th, 1849. Now I read it was 29, so I'm not sure which, but we'll have to work it out afterwards. The text contains one error. Anne Bronte was aged 29 when she died. Oh, there we go, they've answered the question, I love it. <laughs> the plaque was placed here in 2011 by the Bronte Society. <laughs> there we go. Well, at least they answered my question. Have a look at the other side. No, there's nothing really on that side, is there? But what a picturesque graveyard, isn't it? You know, you could sit here and have your sandwiches any time. Scarborough's great because it has two fantastic bays. Um, I mean, you know, I like Whitby better, but uh, I like small places. But if you if you want somewhere which is very large with the beach and the sand, it's uh, it's here. So well done, Anne.
So all the way from sunny Scarborough. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one. Take care everyone. See you. Bye for now. Please subscribe and ding the bell for future notifications. And give me a thumbs up and a comment if you want. That'd be lovely. Makes it all worthwhile. Take care.